There are those that believe that ancient pyramids were high-frequency power stations. We still don't know enough about ancient technology. We still don't know why they were built. We still don't know why, for example, 25 granite boxes were found in the uh, pyramids of Saqqara in Egypt. The granite boxes were empty. It's believed that they were used to create energy and that they were a type of a battery. And uh, of course, the Giza pyramid also has granite boxes empty. Could they have also been used to create energy? Now, ancient pyramids, they say, were high frequency power stations. There are many theories as to who built the pyramids and why they were built. Was there just one single purpose? Well, the recent posting of the Emerald Tablets, supposedly written by Thoth the Atlantean, and he claims that uh, the ancient Atlanteans had such advanced technology that they had space travel. Not only that, they had time travel, time portals, uh, stargates, and even interdimensional travel. They knew how to go from one dimension to the other. And that was uh, their misuse of this technology is why um, God brought their demise. But there were a few that escaped even after that demise, the sinking of Atlantis, and they had gone to other areas of the world bringing that technology with them. This is according to Thoth and the Emerald Tablets. Now the pyramids of Giza, for example, are considered to be the greatest wonders of the world. Gerald Massey, who lived from the 29th of May 1828 to 29th of October, 29th of October 1907, was a poet and author of spiritualism, and he was best known for his book, Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World. He soon died after the book was published, but it remains a staple today in academic circles. I remember reading a profound statement Massey made, and I paraphrase when he said that although he has been studying ancient Egypt for over 30 years, he felt his knowledge based on ancient Egypt was that of a child. I wonder where his knowledge base would have been if he had lived during our times, advanced enough to put the pieces together. There has been a tremendous amount of theories regarding the pyramids. In the earliest phases, archaeologists believed pyramids were nothing but tombs for the pharaohs. In essence, they believed the larger than life a pharaoh was, according uh, to him, uh, to the pharaoh, correlated the size of the pyramid. Later theories morphed into showing the power of Egypt and they were aligned to celestial markers to honor their gods. And many dedicated authors studied over large chunks of their lives and uh, have been uh, compelling, have built compelling cases, but it just might be a real, uh, really simple. Due to the theft and looting, we have been left with a shell of architectural clues. Suppressing the truth of the Great Pyramids of Giza leads back to the elite protecting their systems in order to stay, some say, filthy rich. Now, what we are looking at when evaluating the pyramids of Giza was a multi-purpose energy system. It was free energy afforded to all the people. All homes enjoyed light and power. Even the most rudimentary batteries stayed charged. I discovered a semantic match on the Sumerian tablet of Shamash, which shows a particular frequency embedded in stone. And I began to understand the ancient people used so, sto, sound to move objects. The great pyramids of Giza harness the very sound waves from the inner core of the earth. Humans cannot hear these frequencies from the earth, but sound waves are emanating from the earth. These pyramid cultures flourished because they took care of the basic needs of the people. This is exactly why these ancient empires last thousands upon thousands of years. The Great Pyramid is flat dab in the center of the Earth's landmass and also acts like a fulcrum. This design takes advantage of the sound waves pushing out of the inner core into the shafts, where the limestone dampens the low frequencies and allows, only allows the high frequencies to emanate out of the pyramid. The pyramids were coated with gold, which conducted these high frequencies. 
And this is why there was such a quest for gold from these ancient civilizations, because it led to power, just not the kind most think. Based on the size of the Giza pyramid, field of free energy was created around Egyptian cities. The ancient word for a battery was Dged, D-G-E-D, Dged, and any battery in this field was constantly charged. Anks in this field had increased power, and the darker the skin, the higher the frequency a person could conduct. Rods were used to direct this power in a field for the intended purpose. Due to the, par the partial covalence of what's hydrogen bonding, electrons, electrons are not held by individual molecules, but are easily distributed amongst water clusters, giving rise to coherent regions capable of interacting with local electric and magnetic fields and electromagnetic radiation. So can you imagine living in a country that not only was responsible for the infrastructure and development of the nation, but provided free energy to the people? This was a time when people actually worked together and did amazing things because of free energy. Any device which required power was automatically powered if it was in this field. The caveat is you would have to know the tune, the tune. The elements used to design the high frequency power stations were fettered away from Napoleon's scientific expedition, Napoleon of France. Soon after Napoleon's return, new patents for electronics began to emerge. After Napoleon's army left with the pyramids, unprotected and ransacked began, ransacking began, but rest assured that the components of the high frequency generator had already been removed. Knowing the Pyramid of Giza is a high-frequency generator allows us to reverse engineer the necessary components based on the architecture of all of the shafts, including the King and the Queen's Chamber, as they like to call it. Now, when I look at the King and Queen's Chamber, I see a housing for the missing components. I believe there were customized crystals, crystal housed, crystals housed in these chambers, and when the frequency sped through the water, then the crystals began to vibrate. The frequency, it was frequency so high that it was undetectable by human ears. So let's get a better understanding of crystal used for frequency. A crystal oscillator is an electronic oscillator circuit that uses the mechanical resonance of a vibrating crystal of piezoelectric material to create an electrical signal with a very precise frequency. This means a precise frequency was generated, instrument, tools, and weapons had to be configured to this precise frequency, allowing them to tune in and gain power. If you were an outsider and you needed power, you had to be cleared and trained about the precise frequency. Any invention in the ancient land need only tune in, and massive amounts of free energy was available. The Earth's inner core has an inner core of its own, with crystals aligned in different directions. So let's take a look at the uh, architectural structure and you'll see how the Great Pyramid's design takes the energy from our rotating Earth. Inside the Earth's inner core are more crystals. Remember I mentioned crystals were used in the King and Queen's chambers. Well, the Earth's crystals created an even an ever-present field of sound. We just can't hear it. But it surely can be harnessed, as demonstrated by many ancient pyramid cultures. Could an iron ball 1,500 miles across be a single crystal? This remarkable finding has stirred new thinking about Earth's inner core. Now this also explains why these ancient cultures lived in such harmony with the Earth because she was more than the sustainer of life. The ancients knew the Earth was a power station giving her children free energy. As a byproduct of the Earth's free spin, her crystals vibrated frequency, sound waves. This explains the design of the unfinished chamber of the pyramids of Giza, accepted by academia and perpetuated by educational systems. The unfinished chamber, quote unquote, is quite finished, I assure you. It was designed to capture and direct the sound waves through the pyramid, and in its rawest form, the sound waves come bundled in low to the high frequencies, and again, the water acted as, as a turbo boost, pushing the frequencies through four times faster 
than if they merely passed through air. This allowed the king and the queen's chamber's crystals to vibrate and increase the propagating sound waves in the pyramid. The frequencies propagated towards the outside of the pyramid where the low frequencies were filtered out and only the high frequencies escaped the pyramid. The gold coating on the Great Pyramid of Giza allowed the pyramid structure to resonate only the high frequency. And now we understand why the ancient Egyptians decided to build the Great Pyramid at the exact center of the surface of the Earth's landmass. That must have been the best location for acoustic capture of free energy. If the Earth's core is a massive iron crystal core at 1,500 uh, miles wide, silently ringing free energy around the Earth, who needs fossil fuels? We're all able to dis uh, we're all being distracted, and the solutions are right in front of our face. We could replicate this basic design and transform every industry and change life for the better. At one time, the entire academic system perpetuated the Pyramid of Giza was a tomb for chaos. I can only suspect after the Napoleon scientific quote-unquote theft of the inner workings of the pyramids, false notions were planted in academic circles. Even then, the elite knew not to share free energy with people, let alone with the energy the elite could not profit off. The elite worked through secret societies that span the globe. There is a phrase that whoever wins the war zones of history. As you can see, the, piece of the Pyramid of Giza is more than just a spiritual symbol or a show of great power. It is a transformer of great power. So this means that all other planets in our solar system, including our sun, emanate sound waves, a high-frequency symphony waiting to get tapped like a college keg party. We need only to disconnect from our current path of being fear, uh, fear colics and doomsday prophecy junkies, and we're being distracted as a human race on unprecedented levels. The irony is answers are right in our front of our face, and yet we all need to do, all we need to do is focus on them. Technology has reached such a place in conjunction with the internet where we are becoming aware and thoughts are being connected much quicker now. Now, the high-frequency Anke and the melanin supersuit, instead of focusing on doom and a rush to death, we need to embrace being alive and we need to focus our collective consciousness to improving our lives through free energy. The ancients left us blueprints embedded in stone and we need only use our current scientific knowledge to base a reverse engineering to the solutions, to find the solutions. Understanding the Earth is not only the sustainer of life, but a free energy power station should guide us in protecting her. No more needs for hydrofracturing, oil, or gas because man needs to uh, you know, uh, do away with all the resources of the earth in order to collect these fossil fuels. It's time to wake up as a people and feel the vibrations. This is by revelation now and it's on bended reality. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.